Hey folks, welcome to the shop. Today we're going to make this leather top kit bag with a tooled leather emblem. For this bag I'm going to use a pull-up leather from Acadia that's called Shell Shock. It's a very shiny leather with great cutability and a beautifully contrasting pull-up. I've made one of these bags in the past and I didn't really like that it was not lined so the inside was rough and rather than doing something where I had sewn a separate bag and then tried to work that into the process, I thought I would just line the back of the leather itself. I made one mistake here that you should avoid if you're going to do a project like this, in that I didn't cut down the bandana first. I just put it on there and then I had to go back later and trim it off without cutting through the leather, which was a bit nerve-wracking. A couple of times throughout the process I also had to come back and glue down a couple of spots again because they didn't get glued up really well. Once the bag's fully assembled, if it comes off, it's not really going to be a big deal because then it would just be like any other lined bag where you've got a separate lining. Attaching the two zipper halves was a bit of a challenge here. I ended up going with a contact cement rather than using some sort of pins or clips to hold the zipper on because of the, the different shape of the zipper uh, just wasn't sticking, just wasn't holding with the clips. In the end it worked, but the zipper didn't go on as straight as I had hoped. In this shot you can see that in addition to the light and brown components of this leather, there's also these red streaks going through it. This was a feature that Acadia calls Shell Shock, which I really like. I have no idea how they did it, but it makes for a really interesting look. The sewing machine I used in this project is a Tipman Boss sewing machine. It's hand cranked rather than using a motor, so it was a little bit more affordable and it allows a little more direct control. This bag is of a style called a turned leather bag, which means it's assembled while it's inside out. When you finish assembling the bag, you can turn it right side out and it hides all of the seams. This style of construction eliminates the need for things like uh, piping or the double seams that are often common in leather bags, and those can be really kind of difficult to do. So this is a simple solution that gives a nice elegant look. Cutting out these corners doesn't have to be precise, but it needs to be pretty close. One of the advantages of a turned bag is that once you've got it turned right side out, you can kind of fudge with the corners a little bit, pushing them in or pulling them out a little bit to get the look you want. I wasn't sure initially if I wanted to put any tooled leather on this, but I really liked the idea of a tooled leather straight razor, so I decided to go ahead and throw it on. Off camera, I did the tracing of the pattern and the cut in, and you'll notice that the outside lines of the cut-in are a lot whiter or darker looking. That's because I put a lot of extra pressure with a swivel knife here. Those portions aren't going to be tooled, but rather used as guidelines for my knife when I cut the shape out. I used the stylus on the handle portion of the straight razor to put some little grooves in to look like wood grain. It's not perfect, but it gets a pretty close approximation. Since we had those heavy lines from the swivel knife in the leather, cutting the outline out was really pretty simple. If you don't do that, you can sometimes end up with little pieces of leather that aren't worked cut real well, um, and overall it just becomes a hassle to try and clean that up. In order to give this part of the bag a little bit of dimension, I decided to do a technique called resisting with the die. 
there's a product that I'm put painting on here now called Super Sheen, which is a clear top coat that prevents antique dyes from coming through to the leather, or slows the process down. For the blade, I'm using a metal leafing paint. This paint isn't designed for leather, but if the piece isn't going to come into a lot of direct contact and friction, it should be fine. I picked that rather than a metallic leather paint because it's going to get dulled down some with this antique that's going on. And if I had done that over the top of a leather paint, it would really look just like gray rather than metallic at all. Looking at the badge, you can see those parts that I didn't paint, the handle took on the die while the, edge, the other edges resisted it. In order to get that badge to stick while I stitched it, I used this little grooving tool to cut some of the shiny top coat off of the leather itself. This gives a place for the glue to go into and grab onto. This doesn't have to be a permanent hole, but it needs to hold it well enough so that I can stitch it without the thing flopping all over the place. I decided not to stitch this with a machine because I really wanted to work some more red into the design. To do that I'm using some uh, relatively thick waxed cotton thread from the main thread company which is really great. Using what's called a saddle stitch here, I have a thing called a stitching pony which holds the leather tightly while you stitch and if there had been any more than these few little areas I would have gotten that out. Now we're using the Leather Boss Stitcher to stitch the tops of the parapets. Since this is a hand cranked machine, it doesn't have a reverse lever like most sewing machines do. In order to back stitch, which I did here, I had to lift up the foot and then move the leather back manually. So now you can see with those sides stitched together, we can fold that other seam and then stitch along all of those as well. The back stitching here was very important because there's gonna be a lot of stress on those stitches as we turn the bag. And if we had gone just one pass, I'm not sure that it would have held. Those stitches might have broken and we would have had to turn the bag back inside out and then restitch. Once all four corners were done, it was time to flip the bag inside out. This part's always a little bit nerve-wracking because I'm worried it's going to ruin a zipper or I'm going to bust a stitch, but it worked out. It's just a, you kind of have to manhandle it a little bit. So I started by pushing in the corners, and then it was just a matter of working that corner out and then working the other corner out, and then pushing each of those little edges out to where I wanted them. From there, I needed to fold in the seams that would make this more of a box shape. And here's the finished product. You can see all those places where the leather was bent, the dye has moved away. That's a effect of the pull-up leather. It gives a beautiful contrast between the dark and the light. And then anytime that gets oiled or uh, over time it will develop a patina and it'll go dark again. And then if you use the next time you use it, it brings out additional character. The zipper I used, I probably should have gone with something bigger, and I may put a pull tab on that, because it's a little hard to get a hold of. I really love the way the uh, red contrasts with the brown. And you can see as it's inside that bag, there's less light hitting and that red looks a little bit darker. Uh, it just gives it a really cool looking feel. Now I've got a big beard, and I don't do a lot of traveling, so I'm not sure what I'm really going to do with this thing but it's an idea I've had in my head for a while and I really just wanted to make it and see what it would look like. I really appreciate you guys watching the video. Let me know if you have any ideas for future projects. Thanks.